These days, the big story is there's a pandemic outside. I realize language is not the first thing on our minds. Many of us are self-isolating at home and incessantly washing our hands. I am supposed to be animating an overview of Siberia. That's the next Timeless Linguistic Tale patrons voted for. Timeless. That means not getting distracted by the events of today like I just did at the start of this video but meeting many Siberian tongues that are known or remembered by small numbers of elders, my mind wanders to other languages with few remaining speakers and signers. Today, while I keep making slow progress towards the next one, I want to dedicate some time with you to one such language spoken along Siberia's edge. This goes out to the Ainu, and to all people whose native languages have a small community left preserving ancestral voices. Look at this map, a map of Japan. We tend to think of all of this as the land of Japanese. People here speak Japanese, people here speak Japanese, and here they speak Japanese. But Japanese isn't the only Japanese language. Ooh, future video title there. So let's get more specific. If I asked you to give me basic directions, you might break the map down like this and split it from the snowy north to the subtropical southern islands. Historically, though, the axis runs west to east. Out west, there still survive a bunch of Ryukyuan languages. And over in the east lies Hokkaido, where the culture is distinctive for a number of reasons. Notably, here is home to the Ainu language. Traditionally, their words and lengthy recited first-person sagas echoed over a much wider stretch. Their homes cut across modern borders, up into this chain of the Kuril Islands, and then as now, Ainu live on Sakhalin. From these lands, they met and conflicted with Nivk people of Siberia, more about their language in the next video, and later the Mongol Yuan dynasty. Eventually and increasingly, Ainu came into contact with Japanese from the west. Now if you've ever seen a native term for Japan, chances are what you saw was Nihon, Sun Origin, or Sunrise. But before that, they were called La People. Originally written this way, because of negative connotations in ancient Japan, that character was already replaced with this one. Pin in that. Contact with Wajin brought Ainu words into ink. First in one of Japan's two syllabaries, and later in the second the pointier katakana that has become the main vehicle for modern Ainu writings. Around the time the first dictionary was being published, the people were more and more colonized from the northwest by Russians and earlier and most heavily from the southwest by Wajin. From both directions, they were pushed and pulled to assimilate and forced to relocate. The 19th and 20th centuries left ever fewer speakers of Ainu. Two nations asserted control over traditional lands, made the people the object of policies, treaties, and actions, and ended up silencing two of the three dialect groups, Kuril Ainu in the 1960s and Sakhalin Ainu in the 90s. Now, today, all remaining speakers know Hokkaido dialects. Much about Ainu resembles nearby languages, superficially Japanese and languages of Siberia, but on second glance, it always seems to stand out. Their tongue has been the subject of many, many hopeful and some fanciful classification attempts. Despite these, the linguistic consensus is that Ainu is its own language isolate. I'll mention just one difference I'm guessing will be easy to grasp for most anyone watching. Syllables. Take Japanese with its open consonant vowel pattern. Really, it gets slightly more complicated, but I'll, I'll put an asterisk here for details later. A basic Japanese syllable can start with a consonant, but does not end with one. Ainu is quite a contrast, since all syllables start with a consonant and can have a final consonant. And unlike other languages of East Asia, say Korean or Cantonese or Vietnamese, which have final stops but do not audibly release them, in Ainu they get pronounced. Their script reflects this. Remember that Ainu is written in a script meant for open Japanese syllables. So how do you capture consonant-vowel-consonant syllables in a strict system like this? In a way, like we've seen scripts do before. Letter modding! 
Here, take a consonant vowel symbol and make it smaller. So the word language is not itaku, it's itak. It can get even more involved, check out how final r works, but that's the basic strategy. And it leaves Ainu with its own unique little characters, so now you know how you can tell it apart from just any old Japanese transcription. Today, Ainu has very, very few native speakers. But the community is much larger and has worked for the language to be recognized by Japan. The second Japanese symbol used for wa, that's the character for harmony. As one study book puts it, Japanese and Ainu can now learn the language together and participate in the joys of Ainu. Thank you for watching. Any advertising this month, I want to put towards groups that support indigenous communities who often don't have the security and the opportunity to take even recommended safety measures during this pandemic. This is unfortunately true of many of the last speakers of the world's languages. Nothing you need to do other than watch and share. Stay well, and stick around and subscribe for language.